Okay, um, it's 8 o'clock, so we're going to um, get started here. Our, uh, we have a number of visiting medical students today, so this is their time uh, to impress you. So uh, thank you for attending and for your attention. Um, so our first presenter is uh, Jamie Auden. She's a fourth year medical student at the University of North Dakota, and she will be presenting to us on uh, central and peripheral visual field concordance in glaucoma. All right, well, thank you for having us here presenting at Grand Rounds. So our research team has no disclosures to make. So I'm Jamie Auden. I'm a visiting medical student from North Dakota, and this is some work that I did at Hopkins with Dr. Romulu. So we're going to talk about central and peripheral visual field testing in glaucoma patients. Specifically, does static peripheral testing add useful information to that gained from central testing? And uh, sorry for the graphics. I realize that it's a little bit uh, skewed from what, how I created it. All right, so peripheral visual field predicts some functional outcomes better than central visual field. For example, a prior study dealing with falls showed that peripheral visual field miss points were associated with greater odds of falling and central visual field miss points were not. And peripheral visual field testing can be used to determine suitability for operating motor vehicles. However, visual field testing within the central 30 degrees has become the standard. Now why is this? Well, normal patients tend to have greater variability at more peripheral points. And central testing just takes less time, so leads to overall lower patient fatigability and better results. And prior studies have shown that peripheral kinetic defects occur in about 4% of patients with suspect or early glaucoma and normal central visual fields. Okay, so with this, we asked two research questions. How correlated are peripheral and central visual field loss? And how does the difference between central and peripheral visual field loss vary by disease stage? So this is a sub-study of the Falls and Glaucoma study at Wilmer. We analyzed 232 eyes of 232 patients. Subjects did both central threshold 24-2 testing as well as peripheral super threshold 3060 testing. The primary analysis was done in the better eye, sensitivity analysis was done in the worse eye. Now, a couple challenges exist when trying to compare these two tests. So first, the central testing uses thresholding and peripheral testing uses super thresholding. Second, the test patterns of these two tests have a different number of points. And so we use the percentage of central and peripheral miss points and calculated that for each subject. So for both tests, we define a missed point as a point that was not seen with a stimulus six decibels brighter than the expected sensitivity at a given test location. Now the peripheral test, it gives us this directly. But for the central test, we redefine a miss point as a point that is missed based on pattern deviation value. So if the pattern deviation value is less than or equal to negative six, it was counted as missed. Now you can see the test patterns up here, peripheral on top, central on the bottom, they have a different number of test points. And so we use percentages for direct comparison. All right, so what did we find? So in answer to the first question, how correlated are, are the proportion of missed points in central and peripheral visual field? We found the strongest correlation when comparing the total regions, as shown in the yellow. And these are correlation coefficients. We found weaker correlations when comparing the same hemispheres, as shown in dark blue. And we found the weakest correlations when comparing across hemispheres, as shown in sky blue. All right, so here's a graph of the correlation. We, so this is not showing up, but we have percent central abnormal points on this axis right here, y-axis, against the percent peripheral abnormal points. And you can see that they are moderately correlated. However, for some eyes, 
there actually is quite the variability. Um, the difference is quite significant. Now, how about for the second question? Um, how do they differ across disease severity? And so, again, I apologize. I don't know why the, the uh, y-axis is not showing up on this graph. So, let's see. It's not going to, okay. So this one is going to be percent peripheral minus percent, this is going to be percent central minus percent peripheral miss points. And then we take the same two measures and we take the average of them. Okay, so we have a difference versus an average. And the average can be thought of as like a surrogate for disease severity. Now, a couple of things to note on this plot. The, the difference, the average difference, is very close to zero. However, we see a wide range, plus or minus 50%. And then if we look across disease severity, at, in early disease stage, we tend to see more peripheral missed points compared to central missed points. And then in late disease stage, we tend to see the opposite. It's kind of interesting. We tend to see more central miss points compared to peripheral miss points. <coughs> All right, so what if we take a patient from this region of the plot? What might their visual fields look like? Okay, so here's an example. You can see over here on the left, there's quite diffuse central loss, yet peripherally, there is significant peripheral sparing, especially in the temporal region. All right, so what about this region of the plot? What might the visual fields look like for a patient? Well, here we see a significant uh, peripheral defect on the right there. Yet centrally, the visual field looks quite normal. So in conclusion, when we look at the correlation, we find that central visual field testing is moderately correlated with that of peripheral visual field, but there could be quite significant disagreement for some eyes. And so it might, be, might not be a perfect measure uh, of function of a patient. And then how about for a disease stage? So for early disease stage, we see more peripheral missed points that are maybe not captured on the central testing. So perhaps we could um, add, integrate these into screening tests for patients. And then in later disease, we see quite the opposite. We see that a subject can have quite significant peripheral sparing uh, despite advanced central loss. So perhaps this may play a role in monitoring disease progression uh, when a patient doesn't have many more points to miss on the central visual field. So there are some issues that we'll consider with our study. No lens was used for the peripheral test per manufacturer recommendations. So we might expect a systematic bias toward more peripheral missed points as spherical error increases, but we don't see that. Second, there's no clear way to identify nose and upper eyelid artifacts on peripheral testing and, and distinguish that from a true peripheral defect. However, when we um, just analyze hemifields that would not be subject to these artifacts like the temporal and inferior regions, we still saw comparable findings. And then there's a learning effect in peripheral testing, but this also occurs in central testing as well. Okay, so um, at this point, uh, we can take any questions that you have. So this was, this was all static testing, which is kind of unique to the study. In the past, it was um, kinetic testing. And so, yeah, it was done on the same Humphrey visual field. And we kind of tested some algorithms first, like different peripheral testing patterns, and um, ended up with 
this one, it didn't take much time, about two and a half minutes per ad. Do you think that has the potential to pick up like real early uh, defects demonstrating that there is glaucoma in patients that otherwise have Well, um, that's what these findings perhaps suggest, and we're gonna um, we're gonna investigate that further. We're looking into more of like the functional measures and how they're associated with peripheral versus central loss as well. Things like exercise, gait, stability, um, breathing speed. Um, does peripheral visual field play a little bit more of an important role? And also we can think of not, maybe not just running a full peripheral test. Maybe we could also um, integrate peripheral test points, say if a person gets a certain amount wrong on the normal screening test. Does that make sense? In the example that you gave of the patient who had fairly advanced glaucoma, like all of their points on the central test were 6 dB below normal, and I wonder if there's a floor effect there, like if you reach that severity of glaucoma that, that you know, a size 3 stimulus just is, is too dim to catch a progression, to catch progression of disease. Definitely, that's another implication. You know, if to monitor disease progression using this test 24-2, there's not much of a change that you can detect in the long run, right? Yeah. No, I just meant there's statistically when you're comparing this to the peripheral test that you've kind of hit the floor with this test. Okay. So um, I'm not sure if this will answer your question, but that's one of the reasons we chose to use pattern deviation value instead of the total deviation value. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. I kind of adjust for that. Okay. Yeah. okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.